Uh, so th these are six members of the two Chapin Robotics, uh, Lego Robotics team. Um, there are, I think we're at 19 members on the team, on the two teams. And there are six of them here who were able to join us for the three days. So they're gonna explain what Lego Robotics is. They're gonna explain what the poster board is about, a little bit about the robot. I'll kind of prompt them throughout, uh, but I'm mostly gonna let them do most of the talking because it's their thing. So, uh, guys, take it away. So, Lego Robotic, what's Lego Robotic? Lego Robotics is every year there's like a mesh. There's like a new map and you have to complete missions on the map. And we are, are, we're building different accessories for it to, to complete those missions. And we also, we have four different parts where one is the core values where we have to all work together. We have a robot game where we have to the, where we have to complete all the missions. We have robot design, where we build the robot and all the accessories, such as this and then, to collect things in it, and an arm to help complete the missions. And then we also have a project, which is here. This year's theme is, um, so it's, it's about fuel energy. energy. It's about energy. Our, our problem is we're too dependent on fossil fuels and we want to figure out how to fix them. So our team has come up with a presentation on how to fix it. So I'm gonna pose a question to you guys just to help you guys out here a little bit. How did you guys come up with the actual project idea? We came up with the project idea, idea as like we saw how, how much people were dependent on fossil fuels and how it was harming the earth. So we decided that we could create a city that relies on solar power and private private funds. Private funds. It would run on solar power. Solar power. We'd have electric cars. Basically, everything that wouldn't harm the earth, which is the opposite of what fossil fuels do. Sam, why don't you explain what the robot does? Okay. So, to make the robot move, we need to input coding, which we. Yeah, we need to use coding to make the robot move in certain ways that complete the missions on the map. And as you can see, we built different accessories to help complete these missions. For example, this arm would help us to um, do a complete a task, which is required to move a lever up to release something. This box. Uh, so. In the, in the map, there are some energy like cube, energy like cylinders. cylinders that we need to complete and transport all around the map. This bin will help us kind of, um, it moves in a way where it moves one way but not the other. So if an energy cube is trying to enter in, it can go in easily but not out. And this is a very efficient way of collecting these energies for other missions that require energy. Yeah. <laughs> Natalia's going to talk about some of the different missions that we're tackling. Um, so there are 15 missions. Um, this attachment here uh, helps with like more than half of the missions. And then we have more attachments um, at Chapin in the, the robotics room. And the main goal is to usually, usually you need to move these energies in the right spot. Um, and yeah, there's like a lot of missions. And if your robot does not complete a mission, or if you touch the robot whilst moving around the mat, um, map, then you get tokens, which is a bad thing. So it's not a good I'll back up a little bit. Can someone? Yeah, any one of you explain exactly what the robot games are? What exactly is entailed in the robot game? So, um. So, just so everyone's aware, the robot game is like the big, like, draw that most of the kids come to LEGO Robotics to do. It's like, I want to play with LEGOs. I want to build a robot. So that's what they come to do. Um, and it's only a fourth of what the actual whole competition is about. So the robot game te technically happens at the end of the competition, the last, like, three hours. And somebody explain what that actually means. The robot game has many missions in which the goal is to complete the missions as efficiently as possible. 
with like the least amount of uh, time. time. Yeah, with least amount of time and accessories to make sure the time is the least amount. How much time yes. do you have? I have like three minutes. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> three minutes for each increment, and we see how many missions we can get within that time, and then we get a break. Robot game is the most fun part in my terms because you get to play with Legos and code with blocks, not Java. Java code is not fun. <laughs> in the actual like games, we have we have three chances to like improve a robot with one hour intervals, with an hour interval between each each game. So if in the first game we find something that we can improve have an hour to fix it and the same with the second game into the third and back to what natalia was saying about the tokens so we start off with six bonus tokens powerpoint tokens whatever you want to call them um we start off with six of those and after each three minute round um we count up how many uh tokens we have left um to uh, get extra points. However, we can lose these points uh, if we take the robot off of the playing field without it returning to our home base. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, could any one of you explain a little bit more about w what we did in order to build and design the robot and the attachments and things like that? The robot was designed to complete the past as efficiently as possible, as like. This robot might have been like the easiest way to attach accessories and get on with their tasks. Um, we had to also build other ways around this robot to attach. So uh, the little Lego Technic pens, we could attach other um, other structures, such as this structure right here above. You remember above how to take this. it off? Yeah. Um, above this is is completely detachable between with these pens. And including this arm. Yeah. 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 This is what our map looks like for this year. Since we removed these two pens, this arm was com completely detached and it can attach again if we just put it on and then. This helps, this if helps, we just put the pin down. This we helps save the pin. time between the tasks as we have very limited time to come between attachments. Why would so why would you guys want to change attachments in the middle of a mission? Because only some attachments can only complete some missions. We will we have set up different attachments for the uh, like the uh, the mission models. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, different uh, accessories for different types of mission models. This one would help in like lifting up uh, levers or pu pushing stuff down, I guess. Like. Uh, or pushing stuff forward, like say with the windmill, where you need to push something forward to release the energies. Such as, um, we have this one mission where there's a red bar, and we need to lift it up to release those energy cylinders. We can tell the robot to move this arm up uh, three times, and it would release all the energy cylinders we need to release to work together. The robot's starting right now, so we can show an example. So while we're waiting for that to load up, so you guys talked about the robot game, but you mentioned three other things. There was a project, there was the robot design we talked a little bit about right now, and the other one was core values. Sophia, would you like to tell a little bit more about core values? Okay, so there are core values in robotics is kind of like our five human virtues at school. Like if you go to uh, it's like kind of it earns you bonus points and like. Um, when we're doing the robot games, like judges, they give us like um, it's how our team works. Together. Yeah, like they give us a project or like a challenge as a team, and we have to fulfill that challenge, and we get extra points with that. So yeah, it helps us a lot, and like yeah, they want us to show how we work together and solve problems together as a team. Yeah, that's what core value is all about. So we also have. Game for values. The project. So as you can see, this year is our project. As we talked about earlier, it's about how fossil fuels are like to sustainable. Yeah, it's about to steer, how, how we are to rely on fossil fuels. And this poster board will explain our solution. 
Um, we also, part of our solution was coming up with a sustainable, like, city. We were going to build a sustainable city running on completely reliable energy, which is also a little bit of this model. It's a, it's a skyscraper with plants because the plants help reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the so, I'm going to have the girls talk a little bit more about the actual project, and you can use the board as... So, so um, I'll ask you guys some questions, and I think that might be a little bit easier for you guys to tackle this right now. Um, uh, just so everyone's aware, we're still in the process of getting ready for our competition, which is next week, uh, which is a full day event. Um, and so there's a little bit of nerves. This is the first time you've actually talked about any of this stuff this year so far. We've been kind of huddled together. We started in August um, working together. Um, so my question was, okay, so I asked earlier, how exactly do you guys come up with the, with the idea? But um, more specifically, I know we had multiple ideas that came, uh, came out of discussions back in August. Can you guys talk a little bit about those discussions we had back in August? Project decision will actually happen was that uh, during August, in fact during summer vacation, most of us came to school for a week and then we all decided that we should all come up with individual solutions to the problem. And with the individual solutions being shared after, everyone decided to vote on an idea that we all agreed should be the best. And with the voting, we all agreed that we should make um, a completely or a lot um, eco-friendly city so then it would be like a small project but at the same time it wouldn't be and it wouldn't be as hard as others maybe like reducing the usage over like large cities and stuff okay. sure. um can you tell me a little bit so i i'm gonna pretend i don't know anything about this right now <laughs> so um i'm noticing solar panels windmills and a car can you guys talk a little bit about how does that what does that mean for your project? Um, so the city is, most of the energy is actually going to be coming from solar, wind, and hydro energy because those are the few types of energies that are completely renewable and doesn't impact the earth. And for the car, it's, a, it's like an electric car. And we, we're thinking of modifying the electric car because normal electric cars consume a lot of mobile, which also hurts the earth. So, yeah. Um, how exactly are you guys planning on paying for all this? Paying for it? Through like a private fund. Explain that to me. Okay, so um, the private fund is we're deciding that since there are a lot of companies out there and organizations who are willing to make the earth more eco-friendly, we're considering asking for them for some help and also we we're, are going to have some governmental fund because we cannot completely start a new city all for people to live on with just a few like sponsor um, amounts. So that's kind of where the money is coming from. Okay. Um, <laughs> how, have, you, have you guys thought about how long it's going to take you to do this? Um, well, starting to build a completely eco-friendly city from scratch is, I feel like it's going to take at least a, like a few years actually because we have to get the planning and we have to get like permission and all of those and we have to find a place that is sustainable for this. Okay. Um, have you thought about location where you might want to place the city? Well since it's going to be powered on a lot of hydro electricity we're thinking of maybe putting it on an island that's not too far from the island. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us that I haven't asked you about? And this goes for any any of the six of you. Yeah, you can. So nothing. Okay. This is pretty much everything. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's go back to the robot design. How did we come up with? the plan for how to solve some of the issues. Because we, we didn't just wake up one day and just decide, oh, we're gonna do this, and this is gonna work perfectly. So basically, there were like, there's like a home-based area on like your map, but there are limitations, like it cannot exceed like 12 inches like tall, and there's like an area where you have to keep it inside, 
So this is so far what we came up with as the most efficient way. We decided based on those limitations, limitations, designs, whatever you want to call them. Um, based on that, we created a robot that would both be somewhat quick while completing our tasks, but also able to complete those. Okay. Yeah. Really and I'm sorry. Um, so, for the first time, uh, well, for us, uh, we have two home bases. So, there are a bunch of missions, as Natalia was talking earlier about, uh, around the whole table. And on this, you can kind of see that there are these like, two little semicircles, I guess, on each side. So, those are the like areas we can handle our robot in. Adds like these attachments that help us complete these missions. So the robot design was kind of like we have to make something small to go through all of these areas and big enough to like go through. Also, um, the robot has various sensors on it to determine where it is on the map. For example, here is a gyroscope. It determines the angle that it's facing. Uh, we use it to make uh, turns, like when we're turning, we want to make sure we're actually aligned with where we want to go. So in the front here, this would be like a touch sensor. Yeah, this is a touch sensor. It helps determine like how far away from the wall or the surface it is. It helps, it helps make sure like you don't like crash into a wall or damage your robot in any way. Yeah. And so if we press something with it, the robot will determine that it touched uh, an object. And on the bottom here are two light sensors. On color sensors or light sensors. If you look on the map here, there's a black line spreading throughout the map. A black and white line spreading throughout the map. We can use the color sensors here to determine if we're on the lines to help us. <laughs> okay, so we can determine, so these will determine if they're on the lines or not and can help us get back on track for the robots. We can like provide an example by like running one of our programs. So let me queue it up for Yeah. So, um, so I'm going to run, run one. Um, I know who was in the. Those were TV. Those were the TV. Okay, like, so explain those two, the two missions so we, that we're we actually going to do. We have this one event. It's like about the TV. If you like, can see it. So basically, what the TV does, it's like there are two Lego characters sitting on a couch. Right there. Right there. Yeah. So if you see, there are two Lego characters sitting on a couch. What you do is that you have to push the sofa that they're sitting in, sitting on in. Which, like, uh, in turn, it flips the TV up. So, it turns it on. And that in turn, yeah, that in turn completes the mission. Okay. So, what's the other mission we're doing on the same run? The same run. Okay, so, Sophia. Uh, like, on this, there's, like, um, on the map, there's a windmill. Yeah. This thing. It's in the top right corner. And um, it's kind of close to the TV. So... We thought that it would kind of be easier for us to handle two uh, like missions at once because we're close to nearby them, and we can use like the same parts for the robot to so complete each. So we were doing like a lot of programming and stuff. Um, and so for the windmill, you have to pump this uh, this part, the red part, on the windmill three times to release three energies, which we will collect. So this is it running that mission. It won't really look like much. You'll just see the motors running. Um, that would be it moving forward. If you put it on our map itself, it would actually be It would look like a lot more so we had the live mission models. Exactly. If, uh, if you put it down, it would probably just like, it would go straight and then come back. It would turn around and then it would go forward again. Actually, I think we have enough room on this table. I could probably make it do it right now. Even though it won't look like anything. So the, the TV would be over here. It would move back. It would angle itself towards the next mission. And then that in turn would push it in. And then it would move back. And then it would complete this three it, times so that all three energies would fall out. The windmill requires us to push the, the thing like three times. 
which requires all the energies to fall out. Okay. And since we completed the action three times, we would have completed the mission. Okay, uh, run two that we started the program the other day. Someone explain what we're doing for that one. It's the car. Oh, the car. So it's like there's a lever attached to the uh, back wheel of the car. So we have it set on like a, a ramp. Yeah, on a ramp. When we lift the lever up, which is what this it tends to do, the car will roll down the ramp, which Wait. completes the mission. And it also has, uh, we also have to lift one of the energies in it, and it's a different color, so it's labeled as a car battery. So we have to lift up the lever hard enough for the car battery to go in the car. And fall off the ramp. Yes. So, ladies, just back up for one second. I don't want to get <laughs> that would angle towards the car. <laughs> that would flip the ramp up. Yeah. And then the car And then it would just move back. Yeah. And it's so right now we're in the process of going through we, we made a plan back in August of the missions we were going to do in which order of what we thought were gonna be most sufficient. And so right now the kids are going through the process of looking again at the mission and the order that we decided to do them in, writing what we call pseudocode. Anyone want to explain what pseudocode is? Natalia? Pseudocode. When you're just writing what you think you wanted to do. Okay, Sam. It's, it's a... It's basic steps in English of what you want the robot to do, and from there you can use the code blocks in this special app that we have downloaded to make the code for the robot to understand. So basically, what he's saying is that you're just writing what you want the robot to do on a piece of paper. For example, like move forward, move backward. That we would turn into our, um, into our uh, like robotics app, which would just turn like move the sensors or like move wheels this much angles or something. Which we would then figure out once we have once we have it laid down in our map. It's basically just trial and error. For so a lot of a lot of this is a lot of prep and practice and re repetition, lots of repetition, like just doing those. Uh, two mini runs right there so far. Took us quite a number of attempts of like, we're gonna go forward, we're gonna go back, we're gonna see if we're gonna get it, and then making slight adjustments over and over and over again. And uh, to, sum it, to sum it all up, robotics is about trial and error, which means that we have to work together as a team to complete, like, overcome our failures, and overall, like, I don't know where it is. <laughs> collaborate, collaborate, yes. Good we have job. to talk together. <laughs> Uh, to make sure we finish everything, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. 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 We need to finish all the four aspects for the project, the robot game, robot design, and core values.